what is it like studying theology and what is your career goal when you finished thoughts on birth control have you read the entire bible cover to cover hi guys editing kate right here i don't know where my introduction clip went but yeah this video is going to be a q a i'll be answering your questions that you guys have asked me so without further ado let's jump right into the q a so the first question i'm going to answer how has not being on social media helped you or changed your perspective not being on social media helped me not to procrastinate and not to compare my life to other people online and it helped me just die to myself um, in terms of vanity or wanting other people to look at my life in a certain way or just boasting about what I have and it helps me grow in my holiness like when i was on social media even though i don't follow these fitness influencers like i see photos that are revealing you know cleavage and butt and i don't want to see that okay i want to guard my heart i am a sinner striving for holiness and I just do not need that in my life. There are many things on social media, especially on Facebook and Instagram that makes me angry. So I had to cut it off in my life to pursue holiness. So one big thing that's helped me as well is that I do not procrastinate as much and my focus is not as fragmented as before because social media is detrimental to our focus and concentration. So one of the big things why I create social media was because I want to focus on pursuing masters and I want to do well. How do you share your faith with those who do not know christ i think that it's very difficult to share our faith like we want to preach the whole gospel in one go to strangers or to our friends who do not know jesus but i think we forget that a lot of people have different frameworks and our worldview is very different to their worldview and the way i share my faith is i ask questions like i have not earned their respect if i have not listened and stepped in their worldview and ask the basis for their beliefs first and actually just listen and to care for these people like actually be interested in them and that's the way you love people and when we just shove christianity into their worldview that is not always healthy and to be honest the result might be she would be gossiping or that person would be gossiping to her friends and saying oh this person is just so annoying she's trying to convert me to Christianity so one big thing is asking questions making sure that you enter into their worldview and actually ask the questions of why they believe what they believe ask them their interests and actually care for them give them a listening ear until you um, gain their trust and then you can ask can I share my faith with you thoughts on birth control to be honest i am not very knowledgeable about birth control i am not against it but personally i choose not to use it what are your thoughts on women's role in a godly relationship i think that we should be prayerful godly women who influence um, our partners, our husband, or fiance, or boyfriend in a godly manner, always pushing them to pursue 
Jesus and just always encouraging them to grow in their faith. How are you doing? I'm actually doing really well just now. I'm very excited for Christmas. I am just very thankful for everything that God has been doing in my life. Do you miss social media? I actually don't. I've been off of Facebook for almost a year and four months off of Instagram. I missed Instagram before but not anymore. <laughs> Life is so much better without Instagram to be honest. I do just miss seeing people's updates, the people that I care about on social media but I am always in contact with the people that are closest to me so yeah and what don't you miss? I don't miss the vanity on social media and I don't miss the fact that there are a lot of photos that are too revealing and sexy and it makes me angry inside just for people to post these kinds of like revealing photos and see it as normal. What aspect of comparison to others do you struggle with the most? I struggle with comparing my abilities to other people and because I am always surrounded with scholars, I am prone to look at these people and see them as smart people and that makes me feel <laughs> sorry for myself because I am not as smart as other people and because I value wisdom and knowledge and growing in my knowledge and being smart because I value that that's the very thing that I am very insecure about if you could visit three places in the world, where would you go and why? So the first place that I really want to visit is Africa. I just read a book called The Kingdom of God in Africa and it's shocking to me how it is so rich in Christian history and it is one of the fastest growing churches in the world and I just want to experience their culture and meet my brothers and sisters in Christ there so that is my first place. Second is Turkey. I've been to Turkey twice but I didn't get the chance to visit the seven churches that we read in Revelation and the third country is Israel so Kevin and I really just want to save up money so we could visit Israel in the future. As you look back on your life, where have you seen the providence of God? Um, so one of the big things that God has blessed me and Kevin with is having this house and just having a place where we can feel safe and at home and we actually got this house a month before we got married and when we got the key for this house we were just in awe of how good God is and when we got this house the amazing thing was we didn't feel true satisfaction because of this house like we expected that we were gonna be so filled with happiness and joy and we were happy but it's not comparable compared to just the joy of being in Christ so when we got this house you know we just played songs and we sung to God and it was just the most precious moment what is Bible college like very hard um, I think that a lot of people think that it's just Sunday school you know learning basic stuff but it is very very difficult but really really good it's definitely stretching my mind like no other how did your walk with Christ begin like 
could you give us a testimony of what led you to know and how you first came to know him so it began when a friend of mine invited me to church with him and i heard the gospel preached and i was convicted and i decided to go back to that church and i found myself just going there regularly and then i got baptized when i was 18 and that's about it have you read the entire bible cover to cover yes i have uh, once or twice when i was a baby christian um if so how was your experience and how would you recommend someone read and pray through the entire bible um so my experience before was very confusing i was not taught how to read the bible carefully in its context so before it was very confusing to me but this year um, I'm reading through the entire Bible again and the experience is much better yes I recommend reading the entire Bible from cover to cover I've actually decided to read the entire Bible this year and I'm almost finished with it and I decided to do it again next year over and over and over again I decided to do that because after listening to Paul Washer's encouragement of you know how do I love God more how do I grow in my faith it's to read the Bible and a lot of Christians emphasize God's love a lot of Christians emphasize God's wrath but not this holistic picture of who God is and so sometimes it can be very confusing and sometimes you know I forget what I've read but the more you do it the more you will just be familiar of who God is and when people say to you but God cannot do this God is not this like you know God for yourself because you have read who he is from the very beginning to revelation and um, there are a lot of people who say that oh the God of the Old Testament is an angry God the God of the New Testament is a loving God and there's this huge contradiction between the two but that is a caricature of both readings of both testaments so I highly recommend you to read um, Genesis to Revelation by reading it carefully um, asking your pastors if you have any question um, asking your mentor if you're struggling and having good commentaries that will guide you on how to read the Bible in its historical context how are you feeling I'm feeling very well thank you very much uh, what is your favorite prophecy about Jesus in the Old Testament um, definitely Isaiah 53 the suffering servant it's just really good to be reminded that um, the world's wisdom and the world's um, way is very opposite to God's way like God promised us a messiah who will suffer for us not this uh, messiah who will um, be this superman hero in the new testament God works differently and for us it is power but to those who are perishing the gospel of the crucified Christ is foolishness so Isaiah 53 definitely what passage of the Bible is personal favorite for you um, Galatians 2 20 I am crucified with Christ it is no longer I who lives in me uh, the life I now live I live in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me um, that is my life motto I I just live by that passage because I know that I am very selfish like and I need to die to myself every day and cling to Jesus and um, to live for him and be reminded that I have been crucified with Christ the life that I now live I must live for him because he loved me he gave himself for me and I love him I want to live my life for him time management tips for school I have two tips my first tip is to plan ahead 
if you are too busy to do your homeworks or to do some studying then you might be procrastinating or you might have a lot on your plate extracurricular activities that you might need to say no to and the second tip i have for you is to use your calendar and actually time block the tasks that needs to get done reflect on your calendar to see that you are ahead that you are actually doing the tasks that needs to get done time is precious and when the time is gone you cannot get it back so use your calendar use your calendar how do you make time for jesus if you're busy uh, personally if i'm very busy i have to have my quiet time and i think that you have to prioritize what is good for your soul and um, the way i view it is that you know i always remember uh, martin luther when he said i have so many things that i need to get done today therefore i will pray for three hours because he knows that he cannot do anything apart from god but it's a different thing when you have a lot of deadlines and you can't actually do quiet times that is okay do not beat yourself up do not be legally sick about it but when you are spending two hours on social media every day and you're saying you're too busy you don't have time for your quiet time then you are lying to yourself that you want to prioritize your time with jesus when you are on social media often how to survive quitting social media for good i can tell you right now you will survive without social media there is so much more to life than digital images online and having a social media presence if social media is very distracting to you if it is hindering you from flourishing in your faith in god building your relationship with others then sayonara to social media don't worry you will survive how long have you been doing youtube two years why did you start your channel because i want to share my faith online what's your vision for the channel going forward i just want to post really good in-depth um christian faith talks so next year i have something really exciting that exciting <laughs> exciting that i'll be doing what is your career goal when you're finished well i am studying to be a scholar so hopefully i'll be able to teach in the future but my priority my um bigger career goal is to become a good godly mom and wife so if god will bless us with kids uh, my main priority is to train them in a way that would honor god and yeah to focus on my family and be a good godly wife who encourages my husband who prays for my husband until i die and so career goal is to be able to use my training to teach yeah even if i am going to be an at-home mom i can still tutor online but if i can't do tutoring and look after my kids then of course i'm going to choose my family first so family always comes first the career can wait until later i can always pursue my career when my kids are all grown up so yeah thank you guys so much for asking all of these questions i hope that this video is not going to be super long I absolutely appreciate you guys asking all of these questions. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and thank you so much to everyone who asked me these amazing questions. I appreciate all of you. If you do have more questions, comment them down below and I hope to see you guys in my next video. I hope you guys are staying safe and that you are doing well. See you in my next video. Grace and peace be with you. But for now, much love and God bless. Bye.